In this chapter, we're going to talk about a specific outcome of evolution, which is a speciation or the evolution of new species. Now, before we start, I want to point out that speciation is not always the result or is not necessary for evolution. So you can have evolution of the same species without it becoming a new species. So for example, us humans, we've been evolving for tens of thousands of years and we haven't become a new species. But humans today are very different than the humans, uh, how humans look 100,000 years ago. So we've been evolving, but we're still the same species. However, if the species take different paths, or populations within the same species start taking different evolutionary path, paths, they will become different species. And this is what we call speciation. So if we're going to study whether a population has become a separate species, the first question we need to ask is what makes a population a different species and not just a population of the same species or a new population of the same species. And we have this case study from this uh, king snakes from the United States and you can see they occupy different regions within the country and they also look different. But it is... Um, can we consider them being different species or are they simply variations of the same species? So the same thing you can ask about dogs, for example. A Chihuahua is very different from a golden retriever, yet we call them the same species even though they look very different. So morphology alone is not enough to tell us whether two organisms belong to the same species or not. And uh, the way that, so the way they look is not a reliable indicator of whether two organisms are the same species or not. And what constitutes a species has been a debate for a long time in biology and it's a very important definition in order to understand the processes of evolution. So the most commonly used by, uh, species definition is what is the biological species concept. And this concept was proposed by Ernst Mayer. And in, in this proposal, two populations are considered a different species if they're reproductively isolated. So a species is a group of interbreeding natural populations that are reproductively isolated from other groups. So that means they can breed with each other, but they cannot breed with anybody else. So even though a chihuahua and a dalmatian will be able to breed together, they would not be able to breed with a cat. So that would be a member of another species. And this definition is very important because it has reproduction at its core. And reproduction is one of the most important things in evolution. So remember, it is not about which species can live the longest or which organism can live the longest, but which organisms can live the most offspring. So reproduction is what is driving evolution. So this, this concept is very powerful because it uses reproduction as part of its definition. This is an example of using the biological species concept. We have horses and donkeys, and they are different species because even though they eventually, if you force them, they can interbreed and they will produce a mule. So mules are only the result of a horse and a donkey mating. They rarely do so, and when they do so, mules are uh, sterile. So mules are not reproductive viable and this means that this um, these two species cannot really interbreed because even though they produce an offspring their offspring is sterile it's not a normal offspring yet there are some problems with the biological species concept one of such is we cannot apply it to extinct species so we cannot tell if a species in the fossil record can interbreed with a species we have today. So we have no way to tell whether they are the same species or not based on the biological species concept. This also comes to a problem for species that reproduce asexually. So we cannot tell whether they're interbreeding if these are organisms that normally do not breed with other organisms. They, they either reproduce sexually by budding or like a plant that will self-fertilize self so that you'll never be able to tell if they can breed with another species. Or this species of salamander that is parthenogenical, that means it 
they're only females and the females can lay eggs without having to mate with a male. So this on their own, they can reproduce and how can you test whether they belong to the same species of that of another population that does the same thing. And finally, they can be populations that are isolated geographically. So like this lobster here, they, one live in the Pacific Ocean and the other one in the Caribbean. They cannot find each other because they live in very different areas, but they might look the same. Are they the same species? It's hard to tell just by the, uh, the fact that they're geographically isolated and normally will not interbreed with each other. To illustrate that problem of geographical isolation and the ability to test the biological species concept on this population, we're going to look at this example of tigers and lions. Tigers and lions occupy very different habitats, they live in different regions, and they never encounter each other naturally, so they're geographically isolated. Yet when you put them together and in a zoo and you force them to interbreed, they will produce a hybrid that is either a liger or a tiger, depending whether the male or the female was a tiger and the other one was a lion. This is the geographical range that lions occupied. The current range in dark brown and the historical, uh, historic range in the light brown. And you can see that even in the past, lions have only occupied mostly parts of Africa and Southwest Asia. On the other hand, this is the geographical range of tigers. And here you can see that tigers have never occupied Africa. They've been mostly in Southeast Asia. So they, the range have never overlapped, not even historically. So these two species, tigers and lions, will never really encounter each other in the natural environment and be able to interbreed naturally. Yet, when we put them in the zoo together, tigers and lions are able to interbreed and they produce either ligers or tigons, which are reproductive. So in, as opposed to the mule example we talked before, ligers can reproduce and the same thing tigons. They can produce viable offspring. So they would not be... You cannot use the biological species concept to tell whether tigers and lions are different species because they're able to reproduce if you force them to and they are able to produce viable offspring that can also reproduce. But this doesn't mean that they are the same species. We can clearly see that tigers and lions are very different. They occupy very different habitats and they have very different um, needs. So not, not only they live in different areas, but tigers live mostly in forest while lions live in open savannas. So for these reasons, and because of the drawbacks of the biological species concept, and we're not able to apply it to every single species, there are other bio species concepts that have been developed, such as the ecological species concept, the evolutionary species concept, and the phylogenetic species concept. Let's look at the ecological species concept here. A species is defined as a set of organisms that uses the same niche. Now, a niche in ecological terms means the multi-dimensional space that a species needs in order to live. So this is not just the area where it lives, the type of habitat it uses, but even what parts of the tree does it use for making its nest, what specific type of fruit does it eat, what is the right temperature for it to lay its eggs. So every component that is necessary for that species to be alive, that is part of the niche. So two species that have the same niche, that use exactly the same resources, will be considered the same species. So bringing this back to our example of the tiger and the lion, they will not be the same species under this ecological species concept because they use very different habitats. Like we said, tigers, they can live in the forest where lions need open savannas. Other examples of species concepts, like the evolutionary species concept, says a species is a single lineage that has an ancestor and descendant populations and maintain their identity from other evolutionary lineages. So they keep the same tendency and the same historical fate. And the phylogenetic species concept, the species is the smallest cluster of individuals that has a clear pattern of ancestry and descent. So if we see this graph here, this species have their own branch, and this is a different species because they have a separate phylogenetic branch, 
But these ones here, even though they're multiple species and they might look different and they might use different, uh, they inhabit different areas in California, they are considered the same species because they're clustered phylogenetically so close together that they belong to the same phylogenetic species.